We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We bring expert advice to farmers across the country on how to make their shambas better shambas for them, their families, their crops, and their animals. This week, we're at Mukumo, which is about eight kilometers from Kakamega town. We've heard of a lady who's having problems with her shamba and also her livestock. And so we have set up our Shamba Shepa base camp right here. And now it's time to go and meet Kristen. Kristen is trying to manage her home look after her children and grandchildren and keep her shamba running to provide for the family. Christine, we are very happy to meet you here at Mukumu yes. and we want to see how we can help you. <laughs> Christine, so tell us, um, who do you live with here? I live here with my husband uh -huh. and my sons. So your husband lives here? Apana. Mm. He lives at Darobi. Oh, he lives in Nairobi. Mm. So how many are you are you here? How many of how many of you? I have six children. Ah. Four sons. Uh -huh. Two sisters. Oh, okay. four sons and two daughters. Daughters. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, good, good. Yeah. Now, Christine, yeah. we are here to see how we can help you on yes. your shamba. Christine tells us that she would like more advice on her crops, especially her maize planting, and that her tea crop is not doing very well. So now about your cows, how are they doing? About my cows, oh. I don't have enough milk. Mm -hmm. uh, feeding is poor. Mm -hmm. mm. Feeding mm. and the quality of uh, production is low. It's low. Okay. Mm. Good. Now, Christine, we try and see what we can do. We'll get you expert advice to mm. advise you on your shamba on the maize and maybe on the tea leaves mm. and then hopefully we will make sure that your cow will give you more and more quality milk. Will that be good? Yes. We'll try our best and see where we can help you. Yes. All right? Christine is trying very hard but does need some help and advice. The cattle are not very healthy and so not producing very much milk. And we notice the kitchen roof is falling apart. Oh, lots of work to do here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think I better start with the cows. You know why? Mm -hmm. There's not enough milk in my cup of tea, and I want to know why Christine is not getting enough milk from her cows. Oh, good for you. I think I'll find out what's the problem in the farm mm -hmm. with beans and maize. Ah, good. Good luck with yours. Okay, see ya. Dr. Kirui, a veterinary officer from Coopers, has come to give Christine's cattle a general examination. So I'm going to be his assistant today. Oh, hola. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. it's a feisty one, isn't it? Hello. I think you have injected him before. That's why he's running away from you. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So when you come to this one, yes, I uh, want to look at uh, generally the health status of this. Yeah. Full, full calf. Uh huh. And we start by looking at the. Uh, come here. The nostrils are okay, also. Yes. No salivation again. Uh huh. Eyes are good, bright. Yes. But there is a rough haircut. Yes. And also some kind of diarrhea. Uh -huh. That is where those are the signs mm -hmm. for an animal with with worms. You should do the warming. Uh -huh. And uh, improve on feeding again. Uh -huh. And this calf will be good. Good. Yeah. And here we go. This is the biggest one I've seen on the farm. Yes. We'll also look generally at the health of the animal. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at it, you can see some kind of eruptions on the skins. Mm -hmm. There are some kind of small swellings. Mm -hmm. And also when you come here, mm -hmm. 
the rear udder, mm -hmm. you can see some kind of swellings. Wow, what has happened there? Okay, this one can be a condition called uh, LSD or lumbar skin disease. Mm -hmm. But when I say that, I mean this is a tentative diagnosis. Yes. But uh, confirmatory diagnosis usually happens at the laboratories. Is that infectious? It's, an in, it's not infectious. Mm -hmm. It's caused by a virus. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you usually do is vaccinate the animals. Is it deadly? It's not deadly. Mm -hmm. uh, you just control, mm -hmm. and this lesion will disappear with time. What about these lumps on the skin? Uh, these ones? Mm. This one will disappear after some time. Mm -hmm because uh, the animal will gain immunity yes. against the virus. Yes. And after that, sometimes this animal is going to be okay. Also, yes. I think we must improve on nutrition of this animal. When uh -huh. you look at it, you can say the body condition is not so, so good. Uh -huh. And we have to improve, especially on proteins again. Uh -huh. Yep. All right. And now the last one here. <sighs> come here, come here. You have some kind of skin disease uh -huh. on the neck. Mm -hmm. You can see here. It's not smooth. You can see some hairs coming off, mm -hmm. leaving some kind of uh, lesions here. Yeah. And this is different from the other one uh -huh. because these ones uh, there are no swellings. Mm -hmm. You can see this is what we call mench. It's a parasitic infection. Yeah. But with treatment, it's going to be okay. Okay. Uh, you also need to improve on nutrition again. Mm -hmm. You have to give enough minerals also uh -huh. to give that shiny coat. Mm -hmm. And the mouth. The mouth, I can see, is okay. There's no salivation. Mm -hmm. Also, the eyes are okay. Yeah. But some little bit of diarrhea, ah. which is also a clinical sign of worms. So it needs to be dewormed. Dewormed. Good, good. Yeah. So, Christine, we've gone round with the clinic officer here yes. to check on your cows. Not good news. You're not feeding them very well. Huh? They have ticks, mm. they have worms, they have skin infections. Oh, mm. they'll be good <laughs> yeah? mm. with time, yes? Yes. So you just need to follow what he's going to tell you mm. so that you'll be able to take care of them and get lots and lots of milk, Yeah. yeah which I'll put in my cup of tea. It is recommended that to treat cattle for worms and ticks, the treatment should be done in the mornings. And so we get going straight away. First, the cattle are treated for worms. Dr. Kirui measures the cattle to get the weight, and so he knows how much medicine to give. A treatment called Nilsan is measured into the syringe and inserted into the cow's mouth. This should be done every three months. Now it's time to treat the cattle for ticks. Protective clothing must be worn when using the spray. The triatic solution is mixed with water. Make sure you always read the instructions carefully. One cow needs five liters of water, which means using 10 cc's of triatic solution. Christine has been shown by the expert how to spray the cows and soon she'll be doing it by herself. Did you know that government regulation states that you must have your cattle sprayed after every seven days? This will keep them tick free. Now, Mr. Kirui, thank you so much for spraying her cows. And I'm sure they're on their way to be healthy, strong cows. But is there something else that we should do? Cows also need a home as we do. Oh. And we should construct them a shed. Cattle shed. A cattle shed. Mm, good, yeah. good. And also, we should also construct a crash for each handling of these animals. Spraying and also treatment should be done at the crash. You know what? To make sure those cows are healthy and strong, we are going to do that right now. While Tony and the team make a start on the new cattle shed, I see to it that Christine gets expert advice to help her crops. Peter Mwangi Mude is an agribusiness advisor from IFDC. Peter, it's a huge field. 
What can you advise Christine? Yeah, Christine, the first thing you do, even though the land is huge, is you must be able to estimate how big the land is so that you can determine how much fertilizer you need, mm. how much seed you need, and how much manure you need, yes. and even how many people you require to help you plant the field. Mm -hmm. Then of course, I have seen that the land has been prepared, but it's only been done the first step. You need to do a second step, which is called harrowing, mm. to get a smooth land, a smooth piece of land where you can be able to do proper planting. So what else can you tell Christine? She's decided that she's going to plant maize. Right. Or whatever crop you have decided you are going to plant. Mm -hmm. It's very important because that determines the fertilizer you are going to use and the planting method that you are going to use. Uh, she's going to plant maize and beans. So how can she do it? The best way to do when you are a small farmer like you, Christine, yes. is not to plant a separate plot of maize and a separate plot of bean, mm. which would be the ideal way where you have large farms, mm. which is called crop rotation. Mm. But because your farm is small mm. and you need to increase the amount, the, the, the income from, this, from your plot, mm. and not just the income, but also the amount of food you can harvest from your plot, mm. the best thing is to grow maize and beans together. Wait a minute, so together how, in one hole? Not in one hole, yeah. but you will grow a line of maize and right. a line of beans. That is called maize beans intercrop. Right. Yeah. It's time to put the advice into practice. Make sure you have all your materials ready and make a line for your planting holes. Add a good recommended fertilizer like DAP. Use a measure of one bottle cup per planting hole. Then, Mix in one good handful of farmyard manure to each hole. Place one maize seed in each hole and cover the hole with soil. Use a measuring stick of 90 centimeters to mark the next line of planting of maize. In the middle of the two lines of maize, mark out two lines for planting beans. Use about 30 centimeters, one length of your foot, to dig the holes. Once again, add one bottle cup of DAP fertilizer and a handful of manure to each hole. With the beans, add two seeds to each hole and cover with soil. The benefit of mixing two crops is that it utilizes the land and the crops are not competing for the same nutrients and sunlight. Beans can take nitrogen from the air which can convert to nutrients in the soil, and so the soil becomes enriched for the maize. Meanwhile, the team has been measuring up for the new cutter shed. It needs to be at least a few meters away from the house. It needs good ventilation, be secure, have an even floor and a water and feed trough. We are going to use building materials already on Christine's farm. There is an eucalyptus tree we have to cut down to use, but there is a golden rule to follow. Cut one, plant two. And so for every tree you cut down, you must plant two new ones to grow. Christine and her son plant new gravelia saplings. They are a popular tree in this area. All this hammering and banging means that the cows are going to get a very, very nice cattle shed. Very cool, because it's very important for your cows to have shade. It's not just the cattle that need a new roof. Well, uh, do you have problems in your kitchen? Yeah, it's raining. Oh, it's raining. So your roof is really bad. Yeah. Uh, yes, I can see it's not yeah. nice. So you need a new roof. I need a new roof. A local expert who can thatch roofs has come to do the job properly. Even I am learning to thatch a roof. I mean, if I can, so can you.
They are repairing some of the structure and we then use some of the old thatch and add some new thatch. Recycling what you already have saves money. As the thatcher works on the kitchen roof, I talked to Christine about how water harvesting can help with supplying water to the farm. Right, so if we put guttering mm. around your house, yes. so when it rains, mm. you can have enough water. Now come, check this out. Now, um, when, this, then when the rain comes, yes. and we put the guttering, yeah. so water will fill in here yes. with 460 liters. Yes. And you can cook with it, you can have enough water for your crops, you can mm. have enough water for your animals, mm. right? And you can have water for washing. Yes. Yeah, isn't that good news? Good news. Are you happy? I'm Would you too be happy? happy. I'm yeah. too happy. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Work gets started to fix guttering to the house to harvest rainwater. This will improve the crops, making a better income. It's so busy in Christmas chamber, isn't it? Yes, but we've managed to treat the cows for worms and ticks. And then we've planted maize and beans. Yes, and there's still loads and loads of work to do. We still have to finish the new cutter shed. Mm -hmm. We still have to finish Christine's kitchen. And of course, don't forget the water harvesting. Yes, Lots right. of work still going on. Yeah, and I hope we finish in time. Yes, uh, let's hope we give Christine a shamba shape up. up. Right. Shamba Shape Up team is still here at Mukumu in Kakamega at Christine's Shamba. Where she's been getting expert advice on her crops and animals. A veterinary officer from Coopers showed Christine how to spray her cattle to keep them tick free and advised that they needed shelter that we are now building. And Christine also had advice on intercropping maize and beans that will benefit her income. Naomi, you know what? Before we tackle our next problem, I'm going to enjoy a nice cup of tea. Don't you love tea too much? Absolutely, I love a nice cup of tea. Well, if you love tea that much, why don't you help Christine with her tea crop? Oh yes, her tea crop. You know what? I may just do that. And I'm taking my cup of tea with me. Christine's tea crop is about half an acre. Working on her own, she finds it hard to manage. Mr. Paul Kiprono is from the Tea Research Foundation of Kenya and has come along to give Christine some top tips on tea. Now, could you just explain to him what problems you're having with your tea crop? My problem in my bee leaf, I don't have bee leaves. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. I don't have, get many mm. Quantity. Leaves. Okay, and what yeah. else? In the shamba, mm. I, 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 I do myself only. Uh -huh. I don't have many people. To assist. To assist. Maybe uh -huh. Mr. Kiprono could take from there and advise on our quality and quantity of tea. Uh -huh. Christine? Eh? Yes. Your farm is such a good farm mm. and you can easily get that good quality leaf volume you require, mm. but you need to do some few things. This farm mm. is very good, but there's some few problems. Yes. One of them is that it does not have proper weeding. Mm. You need to do proper weeding. Mm. The second one is the field was not well pruned. Mm. So you really need to improve on the pruning. For mm. example, mm. as I showed you, you see, the stems were removed, the side stems were removed. Mm. You need to have left them so mm. that it spreads. Because mm. what is done in tea, you get the benefit of your tea when the field is big. Mm. So like if you can come here, mm. you see this? Yes. All the, 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 the branches were mm. removed. Mm. When you are pruning, mm. you remove this, the, the branches that are across, you, you remove what is on top. Mm. But don't touch what is on the this side. side. Yes. Mm. Okay? Mm. Then, that is one problem. Mm. The other problem that you have mm. is plucking. Blackie. I know you've said that you don't have labor. For example, in your farm today, Christine, yes. I can see all this leaf is ready. This ready. Yes, but there's no labor. Mm. But nevertheless, one person can still pluck whatever is available mm. and you take the buying center. You need to plug whatever is ready, like mm. these shoots are now ready. Mm. You need to have plugged this today, and this will give you a lot of production. Yes. If you leave it, mm. it will grow and it will go to waste. Mm. So it's very, very important that you become very practical in, in plucking, mm. so that every eight days, you come to the farm, you ensure you replug and take to the buying center. 
Yes. Oh, good. Good. Now, yes. Mr. Kiprono, is yes. there any hope for Christine's tea? Oh, yes. Mm. This is a beautiful shamba. Mm. This is a farm that can come back to production within a very short time. Mm. All you require, Christine, is to get a chamba. You, you weed, you apply fertilizer, mm. and you maintain your plucking. Mm. This is a very nice field. Mm. This is a very nice shamba for you. Oh. The team are getting on well with the cow shed. I've seen them being careful and wearing protective clothing when using the chemicals to protect the wood. While we are still shaping up, I want to talk to you about your protection when dealing with chemicals. You need to be well protected, starting from the feet. You need gum boots. And then an overall or a dust coat, gloves for your hands, for your nose and mouth, you need a mask. You see, your nose and mouth are now protected. Your nose and mouth are now protected. And for your eyes, you need some goggles. And to top it up, maybe a hat. <laughs> now, where has Naomi gone to? Part of the roof is now ready, and we brought new grass and ready to go. Hopefully by today we'll be done. Yes. Your roof is done. Yes. You must be very happy. I'm too happy. <laughs> yes. So now, yeah. wherever it rains, yes. you don't have to be afraid or use your, your umbrella yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. That problem is over. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, let's go. Now show me. <coughs> but the roof was not the only problem with the kitchen. Well, the roof is now fixed. No more rain into your, into your kitchen. That's yes. good, isn't it? Yes. Uh, but I notice there's a lot of smoke. Ah. Mm? Too much smoke. Too much. Yes. yes. And I notice also you have very, only a small windows. Yes. So this, that makes it even worse. Yeah. So you don't like the smoke, definitely. Uh, don't like it. Mm -hmm. yes. Why don't you like it? I get... Your eyes. eyes. Mm -hmm. The chest. The chest. Yes. It's not. It's not healthy at yeah, all. It's not healthy. Okay. So now, if I told you yes. that I could get you a jiko yeah. that does have to have smoke, yeah. that will not hurt your eyes, yeah. that will use very little um, wood. Yes. Would you love something like that? I and would you like? I it? And like. <laughs> I. We called in practical action, who are experts in building new jikos. First, they work on the foundation. When it's done correctly, it will last for years. This chico reduces the amount of smoke, it reduces the amount of firewood, and it's also better for Christian's health. By making a new ventilation window, the smoke is reduced by up to 70%. When it is finished, the new jiko has to be left for several days to dry, but Christine is excited to make sure her pot fits. I'm trying to get in touch with Christine about something, but I, I don't seem to be getting through. But I'll go and find her. I know Christine does not have any electricity, 
which means at night the only source of light is from kerosene lamps. This can be dangerous, expensive and harmful to your health. Now, tell me, what problems do you face with your lighting? Mm -hmm. When children are, are reading, mm -hmm. are writing, mm -hmm. they get so many smoke. Yes, from the, the kerosene lamp. the kerosene. Mm -hmm. The house is mm, so much smoking. Roofing mm -hmm. is yes, do that. Yes, yes, yes. Sooty up there. Yeah. Mm. All right, and uh, where do you get your kerosene from? Ah, kerosene is... So much expensive. Uh -huh. yes. Where do you get it from? From the petrol station. And it's very far. Yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the way it is now, I think, can be very dangerous to the children. They can yes. burn themselves, dangerous. can't they? Yes. A kid might try to read and then uh, burn yes. themselves. Yes. And that's not good. Yes. Well, Christine, I think I have the answer to your problem. Ah. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I've got this for you. But first of all, before you even touch it, I want you to switch this one off. I don't know, how do you switch it off? Why is the switch? Wow, look at that. That's a switch. Wow, terrific. Now, mm. this is called D-Light. 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 Yeah? It's a lamp, mm. solar powered, mm. which means you don't have to go and buy that kerosene again. Yes. It means that the children will not be having any more smoke in their eyes. Ah. It yes. means that you'll not be having your house so dirty. Ash. Right? Yeah. Suit dangling and falling into your food. Yeah. Right? It means that you're going to be having fresh air. Okay. And no more danger for the kids. Right? They can yes. be very safe with this one. Yeah. Because you know what? It uses energy from the sun. Ah, the sun. Sun, the sun, which is very free. Yeah. Yes. This panel mm. picks the energy from the sun. Yes. Which then transfers it into your lamp through that. Yeah. See? Yes. I tried calling you, mm. and you couldn't pick up my calls. What had happened? Ah, uh, it's my phone has not have a charger. It doesn't have a charge. Yes. Guess what? You can charge with this lamp. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. How do you feel about that? Ah, really fine. Give me your phone. Let me show you how it's done. Right? Right? Yes. Because what you do, mm. using the same same system, you plug in your phone there. Yes. And then you plug it onto the lamp. Ah, see? Yeah. It's charging. Ah, mm -hmm. No more going to the neighbors. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now it will be easier for the children to study. And Christine can charge her phone, making sure she doesn't miss an important call, especially if it's from me. Now I have to get back to the cattle shed. The new cutter shed is coming up very, very well. I'm very happy with it. I hope the cows will be too. Christine, yes. we've been to your shamba and yeah. we've done lots and lots of work. Yes. We checked on your cows. Yes. Mm -hmm. No more rain in your kitchen. Yes. The roof is done. Yes. There's water. Yes. And a new jiko. Yes. yes. And, and lots maize. and lots of yes. other little things that yes. we did yes. for you. Yes. Yeah. But now we've got to go. Yes. But that, that reminds me that before we go, we also did some work on your tea crop. Yes. Your tea will be good now. Yes. And which reminds me that it's time for us to have a cup of tea yes. before we leave you. Would you like to join us? Yes. Good, let's have a cup of tea. Shamba! Shamba! If you'd like a leaflet with more information, text your name to 5606 using the words below. That's 5606. Sadly, we've got only a few more episodes left in the series.
In our final episode, we'd like to show you clips from the subject that you found most useful. And this is where you come in. We want you to text to us the subject that you found most useful to you. For example, if it's chicken, text chicken to 5606. Voting ends at the end of May.